Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're going to be taking a look at a Muv Love kit from Kotobukiya. I think I've reviewed two of these in the past, but it's been quite a while. So let's go ahead and take a look at another one. This one is the, uh, okay, uh, non-scale full action plastic model kit, Balalaika. So um, forgive me for the pronunciation of that. Uh, it's a, not an easy name, Balalaika. I'm guessing that's right, but... Who knows, maybe not. Anyway, it's a pretty cool mecha from the Muv Love series, a series that I've not seen or I don't really know anything about. I know that like, they fight some like weird alien bugs and stuff as well too, and like I think there's usually some included in these kits, but maybe not in this one. I think this is in the larger scale, and there's two different scales for these, some larger ones and smaller ones, I believe. I think the ones that I've reviewed before are like the smaller ones, and those come with like the little bugs and stuff. I think these larger ones maybe don't. So for those of you guys who are fans of Muv Love, maybe didn't know that there was kits of them, hopefully this re review will be helpful for you guys. For those those of you who may be interested in these kits but haven't seen too much about them, hopefully this review will be helpful for you guys as well too. Or just, you know, in general, hope it's helpful. So let's go ahead and check it out. So first off, on the front here, you can see the artwork of the mecha. And I just want to zoom in here on the artwork for you guys. Because I like how even in the artwork here, you can see like it's kind of weathered. It has a little bit of like chipping around the edges and stuff like that. So it just looks like really cool. You can see like the, the markings are like even a little like scratched and stuff like that. So just some really cool artwork of it here to get a look at kind of how the mobile suit, or it's not mobile suit, how the mecha would look uh, just kind of with some slight weathering on it, it looks pretty nice. And then of course down here an illustration of the pilot character there as well too. I'm not familiar so I'm not even going to guess who that is or whatever but anyway on the ends of the box just kind of got the same thing there. Or on this side of the box got a front and rear view so it's got this cool machine gun there and then it's got this uh, shield with some like reactive armor on there that looks pretty cool. One thing that I love about the Muv Love kits is that they have these big binders out the back of them as well too. And those always look really cool. It's got uh, two of those machine guns I should say that store up on the back. Again, they all kind of share that trait usually that their weapons store up there on the back like that. It's also a cool aspect about these designs. So you can see kind of everything that's included, the binders, the weapons, the shield, and some different hand option parts, the knife as well there too. And then some other kind of action poses over here. Now the mobility of these, as far as I can remember, is not that great, but it's good enough to be able to do some simple action poses, so that's pretty cool. Here on the other side, you can see it does come with a couple of decals, basically just a couple of marking decals. I think that's gonna be about it. Otherwise, here is gonna be how it's gonna look just straight out of the box built up without being painted, so you can see it doesn't look too bad. And then up on a base. Now this little note down there is letting you know that the base is not included, but that is the Kotobukiya flying base. If you guys want to check out that particular base for this kit. Over here, we can see the list price is 5,800 yen, so about 55, $60 for this, not too cheap, but I'm guessing the size of this is going to be comparable to like the size of a master grade kit. Uh, so we'll see how that compares. And then obviously, uh, the Kotobuka's quality is always good. There's always, always a lot of nice detail on there, so that'll be good. Uh, but I'm sure obviously it doesn't have anything like a full inner frame or anything like that. So expect it to be like kind of generally the size of a master grade, but not exactly quite like a Bandai master grade. But anyway, in here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bags of runners. And let's see a little pre-painted part there. Take a look at that in a moment. And our instruction manual here. The instruction manual just having the same artwork as the front, just with a black background does look pretty cool. On the back side, just the Muv Love logo there. Opening it up to the inside, we've got a nice illustration there of the balalaika and some information about that, but it's all in Japanese. Down here about our pilot as well too, so there's that. Over here, a breakdown of the parts. So there's a, again, just illustrations. Illustration of the shield there, the weapons, the head. It's a nice head illustration there. And it's kind of mechanical illustrations for some of these parts. That's pretty cool. Some weapons vari variants there. So you can see how those differ like so. So that's pretty cool. I don't think you can make all of those different variations with what you got here included with this kit, but that would be cool if you could. On the next page is our parts list. So you can get a look through those. And it doesn't look like we're going to have much left over. So it looks like it's going to be using pretty much everything that's in here. And that's just all construction, construction until we get towards the back here where it should have our color guides. This is for the camouflage template. So it gives you a good thorough look around the mobile suits or not I keep wanting to say mobile suit around the mecha so that you can get a look at how the camo is kind of technically supposed to be if you want to follow that exactly. So you've got front, left view, rear view, uh, right view to get a good look all the way around there. If you want to copy the camo pattern on the top view and below view even as well too. If you want to get it super accurate, and then over here we got our color guide as well too. So we've got all the color mixtures there for you laid out and it shows you where those are gonna be applied on the mecha as well, so all that's there. And then action pose, rear view, front view there. So a couple of sample action poses here for you. As far as like the decals go, I'm guessing they just trust you to figure that out on your own because it's only like two of them included. 
And here those are, just the 666 logo and then this logo here which you've got two of. So that's pretty simple, but it's nice to have at least a couple of water slides included. And then here is that pre-painted part. Basically it's just this part for the head with the little chin piece there pre-painted in orange for you. All right, so first up we do have some poly caps included here, PC1 and it's like a dark grayish color. And then also PC2 for some more of those. And we've got two of this PC2 runner. And the runner A here, like most of our armor, is gonna be in this kind of dull olive drab kind of color. Does look pretty nice. Let me just zoom in on that so you guys can see. You can see there is a lot of really nice little fine detail on there for you to paint in once this kit is all painted. We're gonna be here just continuing on with the armor. They can see some bigger parts for the legs and some parts for the arms on there as well. And then we're gonna see some more armor pieces there, including some pieces for the shield there. And then the last of our armor pieces are gonna be all here on the D-Runner. So we've got two of these D-Runner and there you can see are the little squares for the reactive armor on the shield. So it's gonna be fun having a lot of those to cut out. And then we're gonna E here is in a super dark gray, almost black for some of our hand parts and some more kind of like inner frame quote unquote parts. And the same thing here for runner F as well. Some more of these parts that are just uh, almost black. We've got two of this F runner. The reason I say that they're almost black is in here if you compare it to the G runner. The G runner is actually full on, like uh, also kind of glossy black color here for some more of those kind of joint parts and stuff like that. And that is continued here onto runner H as well for the rest of our joint parts, which are in full on black. We've got two of the H runner. Runner I for some weapons parts here is in a dark bluish purplish gray color. And the same thing for Runner J, which is obviously going to be our parts for our weapons. We've got two of this J Runner. Runner K is some little parts here in clear orange. And the same thing for Runner L, some more little clear orange parts. We've got two of this L Runner. And last but not least, Runner M here for some parts in this bright orange for some bright orange little accents on there as well too. So there's a look at everything in the box. Now let me get it all put together and we'll see how it looks. Well, all right guys, here it is all built up and I gotta say, uh, just standing there, it looks pretty weird with this guy. I mean, it's got some funky proportions, some super wide hips and massive shoulders and those big long arms. I mean, it's a weird proportions. I think it's gonna look so much cooler in some action poses, but as for just standing, there you go, there's how it looks. I mean, it's gonna be pretty all a wash of just kind of this uh, same color as well too. You got a couple of nice little bits of orange accent there, which do look nice. Some actual orange parts and some clear orange parts. And especially for those clear orange parts up in the shoulders and at the bottom of the legs as well too. Might want to get some like silver paint or something like to paint in behind those clear orange parts just to make those really pop and really visible. And of course the kit's got a number of seam lines on there as well as some definite limitations in its articulation, but we'll get through all of that and also check out all the accessories here first. Let's go ahead and get into it. But real quick first, a comparison to the Strike Eagle, which was the Mublev kit that I previously reviewed a few years back. And as you can see, this is definitely in the larger size. So there's definitely the two scales. The, lar the smaller size is one of 44 scale apparently, but the larger size here that we're reviewing today is just says on the box non-scale, but I mean, it basically looks like similar to your comparison with Gunpla, 144 scale to 100 scale, something along those lines where this would be sort of like the mass grade version. Albeit, even though it's not really any more complicated than the 144 scale version, it's maybe, I mean, I'm sure it generally has a higher part count, but they're really not that much different in terms of the construction, basically just the size more so. So what do we got for options for this kit here? You can see for the hands, we've got a set of closed fists. We've also got a single open hand here for the left side only. Some trigger finger hands here for the left and the right. And then two different sets of holding hands here. So these are gonna be slightly different. One set is apparently for holding the knife. The other set seems to be just for basically holding on to the shield handle. Otherwise, nothing really else to hold on to. So here is the knife. It's simple and basic, just one piece there. And as far as I can tell, there's nowhere to actually store this on the kit. So you just have this in one of your holding hands uh, for the knife or just you have to set it off to the side. And then here is that shield. Very cool with all those separate pieces on there for the front and you have this kind of uh, saw blade sort of looking bit here. Anyway, this uh, edge weapon here on the side of that. On the back side, you can see some nice color separation with this big gray piece on there. This handle will move up and down on this track. So this doesn't actually attach to the arm in any way. You just have to rely on holding that hand. So we'll see how solid that is. I'm a little bit worried that the shield is gonna end up just kind of falling down like that when it's actually in the hand, but we'll see how solid that can hold on to that. You can also then rotate that there as well. So not only does this work as a defensive weapon, but also as an offensive blunt weapon here as well too, which is pretty cool. And then we've got two of our assault rifles here. These are really nice. You got uh, the grenade launcher. I believe that's what it is attached there onto the front. That's just molded on there together. So you can't remove that. Unfortunately, just this exactly how you see it is exactly all that you can do with this. 
seam lines on this too here of course. And then you have this piece, which is what you will use for plugging this up onto the back of it. I was gonna say onto the backpack, but it's not really a backpack, it doesn't have a backpack. Just up in here, so that just, just slots down into that part there. So there you go, you can see you can plug the two of them into the back like that, and that does look pretty cool. So as for the kit itself, like I said, we've got a bunch of seam lines um, basically kind of everywhere on here on the shoulder, on here on the forearm, a seam line going all the way down the sides of the forearms there, all the way down the front of the leg, as you can see, down the front of the lower leg here as well too. On the back of the leg there going all the way down, you got seam lines there, a seam line on the back of the foot here, seam line right down the middle of the butt up there as well too. And on the front of the crash bar here, not on the very front, but just on the like the top of there, you got a seam like right there. Seam on the head, not really on the side as that seems to be uh, like an intentional panel line there, but on the top of the head, a seam line right there as well. So you got lots of seams all over the kit, not to mention the ones here on these uh, big engines, thruster bits here on the back of the legs. I was gonna say back skirt, but again, it's like on the back of the legs. Uh, seam line right there, and then seam line here on the top of there as well too, right there. So you got some seams, but these parts just, just they look just super cool. I mean, you gotta love these big parts had added onto the back of there. That's really cool, unique uh, design feature of these. And you can see here on the back of the leg how those plug onto there. Now I'm not sure not having not built any of the other uh, kits in this size of this series, but I know some of the other ones have different designs for these parts. So I believe they should probably be interchangeable if this connection is the same. If any of you guys know for sure, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, but it looks like that those are probably all gonna be maybe using the same general uh, connection piece there for that probably so that you can maybe interchange them with some different ones uh, that have a little bit different design on them maybe. But as for the articulation the head will go up to there and you can see that a clear visor piece in there for the head does look pretty cool. Very thin and tiny little head here and that will also point down to about there so pretty good movement there for the head up and down. The shoulder will swing forward and back just a little bit. The shoulder armor itself you can move up and out of the way. It's basically just a big hollow chunk there. So you can move that up. You can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees perpendicular to the body. It's going to be about the extent of that. You got some rotation there at the top and a double joint here in the elbow. Should give you a pretty good bend there. Also another seam line in the bicep as well. I forgot to point that out. You got that there also. So pretty good full bend there for the elbow. The wrist is just on a ball joint there. And you've got a pretty good ab crunch here in the waist section. So you can move that forward and back like so. And of course a little bit of rotation here, but it's kind of a little bit blocked by that bit down there. So you've got a little bit of movement there. So ultimately the waist section, not too bad for the articulation of that. As far as the hips though, they're gonna be a little bit limited just because of these big massive thigh parts, how they fit onto there. The ball joint that they're on is not really like sticking out far enough. So you can't really move the legs out too far. This whole bit kind of like extends out to the side. So you can get them separated to about there, which is pretty good. And you can rotate them back only to about there to have your legs kind of uh, spread apart a little bit like so. Obviously forward and back movement's not gonna be a problem without having any skirt armor or anything on there. These bits here on the back have a hinge to rotate up and down, but then they're also connected onto here via a ball joint as well too, so you can move those around, change the angle of that, tilt that up if you need something like that. The knee joint also has a double bend like with the elbows to give you a really nice full bend there, kind of more than you would really need for that, exposing some more of that orange part there in the knee frame. And then down here at the ankles, also a seam line on the front of the foot, those lighter gray pieces, seam line there, seam line there. Uh, the ankle will move a little bit side to side, and this one as well too, I almost forgot, this can also actually extend down a little bit like so. So you can see uh, to move this side to side as it is, it's not really gonna move very much, but you can extend that down a little bit and then get more ankle movement out of it. So you should be able to get a pretty wide stance out of this. So that's actually not too bad. And forward and back movement also gonna be pretty good too. You can see the toe will bend forward like that. So you could have the leg like really far back like so. Up underneath the feet, some nice detail there. And then you can point the feet down like that for when you're wanting to have it in some flying poses. So pretty good articulation, especially in the legs. The arms is pretty all right too as well. So I mean, overall the articulation is pretty good. And one thing too, in order to put it on action base, you need to remove this little panel here that will expose your standard kind of three millimeter size uh, action base adapter point. So you can use that with a Bandai action base or the Kotobukiya flying base. Either one should fit onto there. But as we get into trying out some different poses here with the kit, I think you guys will see that it actually poses really quite well. I'm actually noticing that the articulation is better than kind of what I was expecting. As I was building the kit, I was thinking like, hmm, not really gonna have uh, that great of articulation it seemed to like. But I mean, actually in practice, in posing it, it does actually have really nice articulation and almost uh, 
equally or more important it's very stable as well too one thing that i found with the 144 scale kit that uh, it was kind of weak and uh, like the arms kept coming out of the socket and things like that uh, just parts like coming and falling apart with this i'm finding this to be pretty stable nothing's really coming apart or anything like that I'm also pleasantly surprised at how well it holds the shield as well too. I was worried about the weight of the shield and the hand, but because the shield has that kind of texture on the handle, I think it actually holds onto that really tightly and really well. Even though the shield is like somewhat heavy, you know, for that part, there's a lot of pieces on there. It actually holds the shield very well and it's not an issue whatsoever. So finding this kit to be actually better than what I was expecting after just building it up, you know, it has a cool design, but I think like I was expecting before that when it's posed, it looks better than just standing and it actually just works a lot better than I was expecting as well too. Now it still has loads of seam lines all over the place, which is a bit of annoying. Uh, if you want to paint up the kit, it's going to be quite a bit of work just removing all the seam lines and everything on it. So you got that work ahead of you. But as far as like the different weapons and uh, posing options that you can do with this, it's really, really quite nice. And a lot of great detail on there as well too. Certain areas where there's not a whole lot of detail, of course, you could add some more if you wanted to, or just big wide open spaces for some cool markings, or just if you wanted to add like a camo. Uh, pattern onto that when you're painting it. I think it would look really cool on some of those uh, more wide open spaces like up on the shoulders, the thighs, the legs. Anyway, if you wanted to add some camo, I think it could look pretty cool according to the official camo scheme for this or, you know, just make something up as you want. So really cool kits. Definitely, if you can get it for a good price and you can sometimes often find these for pretty good prices around because I think just Mob Love maybe not necessarily as popular as other series, but even though they're more expensive, I can definitely recommend this uh, larger size, the non-scale kits more than the 140 scale kits. Uh, that said, there are more variety available in 144 scale, so it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. I think I've got two other 144 scale kits in my stash that I need to get around to building and reviewing for you guys, so I will do that uh, sometime in the future as well too. But for now, I hope this video was helpful for you guys if you wanted to see some more about these kits. Maybe some of you didn't know that these even existed or anything, so hope you guys found the video useful. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any other further questions or comments, of course, do feel free to leave those down below. So as always, thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support as well too. You guys can check out all sorts of different Kotobukiya kits and Gunpla, of course, everything there on the site. The link is down below as well as my coupon code there, Zakorilius10. You guys can use that to save 10% off. That's all down there in the video description, so check that out. Till next time, guys, if you want to like the video, comment subscribe all that would be greatly appreciated thank you so much i'll see you guys later have a great day bye guys